today. Is triple I better than quadruple A? Let's do some game industry math. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, hosted this week by your favorite anchors, Kathleen DeVere and Brendan Beach Deary. A combination I'm calling Kathy Deary. I do not like that. But you, do you, you don't want maybe Beach Lean Deary Veer, do you? Why are these the only options? The big news this week is not that the 3DS and Wii U can no longer go online, but that you can still take them online. Meet Pretendo. Yeah, I know a, some of you already have. Pretendo is a fan-made Nintendo Network replacement that's been around for years at this point, but they had big news to share now that Nintendo Network is officially shut down. You do not have to mod your Wii U in order to use Pretendo. Instead, they've written an exploit called SSSL, which is... Frankly, the easiest hackless hack I've ever seen. Just go to your Wii U's network settings and then change the primary DNS server address from auto-obtain to a number I'm not going to give you because you can just go to their website and find it there. And frankly, it's probably not good to give it out over the air anyway because you could watch this video a year from publication and the DNS server address could have changed. And for all I know, the address I almost said could one day connect to a malicious fork of the Pretendo network because that's right, this is open source. If you want to bang away on some improvements for Pretendo, it's on GitHub. There's currently no hack like this for the 3DS, but there's a great 3DS hacks guide website that pretty much anyone can walk through. Anyone except me, of course, because I'm a big chicken. E3 is dead. Long live Triple I! The Triple I Showcase, the I stands for Indie, was designed to be 45 minutes of cool announcements by independent developers with no hosts, bits, ads, jokes, or otherwise corporate ass kissing, an item that was wisely referred to as fluff per the Triple I press release, but I know what they meant. It's a refreshing approach, given that the industry's heir apparent to E3's announcement blitz, the Game Awards, seems to be more about cementing the reputation of founder Jeff Keighley as gaming media's go-to guy for feel-good puff pieces that will never mention the unrelenting tide of shareholder-motivated layoffs, other than, you know, actual news. But anyhow, what was I talking about? Right, the Triple I Showcase. What got announced? Slay the Spire 2 is coming to early access in late 2025. Darkest Dungeon and Risk of Rain are getting big free updates. Vampire Survivors is working with Konami for a Contra crossover DLC called Operation Guns. Pal World is adding something called an Arena Mode. And we got our first look at Never Alone 2 and the brand new games Cataclysmo, Dino Lords, and a Prince of Persia roguelike that's being made by Evil Empire. Overall, the Triple I Showcase had some big cool announcements and some smaller, less exciting ones. So it was an announcement showcase, just without Jeff Keighley stopping every two minutes to thank our wonderful corporate overlords for their continued benevolence. Great, more of that, please. If you're like me, you can't stop thinking about those silk pillowcases you saw at Winners and should probably go buy them tonight. And you also consider Dragon Quest to be the superior JRPG franchise. So, more good news! Since the 3DS can no longer access its servers, you can no longer access the Dragon Quest VII DLC maps. Except, you can, thanks to Gronya and Danny Fofani, two Dragon Quest fans who independently put in the hard work on both the PAL and USA versions. DQ7 DLC doesn't work the same as a lot of other games. In order to unlock it, you have to progress to a certain point in the game, then download one of 56 tablets, which each contain a map. This would be all well and good, except the point of this exercise wasn't just to download the maps, it was to ensure a clean copy of the save file, meaning that the main characters in the game would have to stay at level 1, while a less central character would have to be hyper-leveled in order to carry everyone else through the game. Gronya summarized her journey in a YouTube video, which I highly encourage you go watch, because the task took her 340 hours. That's two full weeks of playtime, which she did while recovering from a hospital visit, 
hopped up on prednisone. And since we established you're like me, you also know prednisone's the good shit. Gronya and Danny Fofani have uploaded their save files to the internet. They're out there somewhere. So you now have the option to hack your 3DS, grab the save files, and enjoy a bit of gaming that could have been lost forever. In lighter news, it's an election year in South Korea. And this is relevant not because of the election itself, but because of a very old mobile game and a fascinating Reddit post from user HJYBoy1218. The game in question is called Cookie Run for Cacao, and it came out in 2013. Active development on it ceased in 2016, and in 2018, its international servers shut down. So it's only playable in South Korea as sort of a legacy title, since the developer has been putting their energy into its sequels. And no one has really thought about this game or talked about it in years, but it still works. But fast forward to last week, when out of the blue, Cookie Run got a surprise 11th anniversary update, with events, welcome gifts, and an entirely original cookie. And this was exciting because this new cookie and their associated pet are not available in any of the Cookie Run sequels, just the old Cookie Run cacao that's only available in South Korea. And there's only two ways to get this new pet, to pay cash or to invite 20 friends by sending a spammy message to their phone number. And who wants to do either of those things to get a digital dog in an old mobile game? But very luckily, because it's also election time in South Korea, there's a huge bank of very real phone numbers that are freely available to the public. That's right, it's all the candidates running for the South Korean General Assembly. What a perfect way to pay back the very same people who've been sending text messages and robocalls all week asking for votes. At its core, this is very low-level mayhem, but in 2024, I will endorse any level of mayhem. Good work. Any plans for the rest of the day? Mm, corporate training seminar and a big bowl of salad. How about you? A shot of back medicine with a 14 hours of sleep chaser. I love being a grown-up. Coming up. Sega has declared 2024 the year of Shadow, which either means they're going to promote Sonic's edgy rival, Shadow the Hedgehog, or they're about to initiate their plan to block out the sun and hold the world for ransom using a hitherto unknown capability of the Sega Saturn. Fingers crossed! Oh, yeah. That was, that was some, that was a, a clean second take for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> No one will know that you've made any errors. No. Not Heather certainly won't put them in in the blooper reel. Bits, ads, jokes, or otherwise corporate ass-kicking. An item that has kissing. Why did I say that? <laughs> I just want to kick ass. I guess. Secretly. The... <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. I, uh, I, I mentioned the Dragon Quest Seven thing. Uh, I think it's actually very interesting we talked about this a little bit too is that yeah. part of the reason why this was so complicated and why the clean save as far as i can understand was so necessary is because i think the idea is to try to keep like an archival piece of this game right and so what you want is you want a save file that doesn't have a bunch of characters leveled up to random levels with random improvements or whatever you want to keep the game as tightly focused as possible. And the main characters are people that, you know, are like, well, if you leave them at level one, you know what their levels are, you know what their starting stats are and everything else. Uh, so if you ever want to try to do a diff and extract all the the maps from the games, so you can maybe- You have the least amount of change data possible. Exactly. From a base level save. Also, I think that I, I, I was like, why do the main characters need to be low level? But it also, if I wanted to play this with the access to the DLC content, I could just download this save file yeah. and start as close to fresh as possible. Essentially, yeah, you could start from level one with them and be like, well, I am, I am further in the game than I would normally be, but at least I can go around with the level ones and try Try to get to where I need to be. It's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting reason and justification. It's it, the Gronia doesn't make the entire plan very clear. But what made me laugh is that um, well, th two things. One, a single save slot in the save file cannot hold all fifty six maps. <gasps> you can only hold twenty four. So 
Does she have to do this multiple times? I think what she did, and she doesn't make this clear, I think what she did is she made a copy of her save file into all three save slots and uh, and then downloaded all the, like, 24 maps to one, 24 maps to another, and then the remaining eight maps to the last one. And I'm just like, that's, that's crazy that you had to go through all that. She had to work with guides that were not that didn't tell you how to do this. They kind of just they kind of give you roundabout things like here's ways to deal with this and that because nobody's ever really done this before. And so she started early March and she had until early April to finish. And because she was laid up at home from being in hospital, um, she's like, I have all the time in the world to try to do this and drove herself crazy doing it. Oh. And there's great points in the story, like finding out that she was doing unnecessary shit. And yeah, and also she has a wonderful Irish accent uh, uh, which makes it such a pleasure to listen to. Oh, so it's just it's, it's a little bit of just like appreciation for a non-Canadian accent. Yeah, exactly. We I, do have an incredibly flat accent here. We do. We do. Yeah. H J Y Boy twenty or twelve eighteen. I don't I don't know how to say that name. Yeah, right? An H J Y Boy. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, I I have to assume. Otherwise, it's hand job, ya boy. Yeah. No. No. 